well as a gamble after that last week, but so we quiet. are back for another week of bros, bumps, and beers. I am the EST of Triple B, Pat Gagne. You got to stop calling yourself that. Oh, my God. Uh, alongside Matt Tooties Gagne. And Tooties. with us as always, Tooties. And Tooties. with us as always is Jordan the Guava God Schofield. And of course, Jordan is again shirtless because he likes to make everybody uncomfortable. How's everybody doing tonight? I, I'm not uncomfortable. It's above the nipples. Even if it was below the nipples, I'd For be now. fine. Jordan's You're nipples the only make me uncomfortable. You Why? They're uncomfortable. normal. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh there it oh. is. Guys, tell me how this sounds, considering our new potential. Oh, it sounds normal. Doesn't sound like you're in a submarine. Oh, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so here we are. Episode nine, one away from 10. Raise your hand if you hold thought on, we'd Hold on, hold on. Check the math. Yeah, you're right. Raise your hand if you thought we'd get to 10. My hand's raised. Sean Spears thought we would. <laughs> that's good. That's a good reference. Oh, oh, oh. That yeah, that's a Ty good. Dillinger comment. That's I like Ty that. Ty Dillinger. So, uh, yeah. So, boys, I'll uh, let you let you in a little secret. Pat was flying solo all day today. The wife so took the dog. The wife took the dog and went on a camping trip with her friend and her dog. And that's because you and your wife both are at home right now, to clarify yeah. for the listeners. Well, we're teachers, right? Yeah, teachers. So they so, have two uh, months off to do nothing. Oh, whoa. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't whoa. really, I can't really defend that today because you, you ever like have a sick plan in your head? Like you're going to do something all day, like you're going to get shit done. And then every you end day. up, and then you end up not doing shit that day. Pretty much every day, my wife's not home. Like she left, and I made a stop at the queue, which was pretty pick clean from the weekend. Oh, yep. uh, sure. I went to Subway to get lunch. Shout out nice. Jordan's family. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I I stopped at uh, Shout Out Miller's Meats and got myself a huge T-bone steak. Solid. Well, okay, I gotta I gotta ask a question though. Okay, so you sent it. me a picture of this steak. Mm -hmm. Why a T-bone? It was on sale. No, okay, fair enough. That's a good reason. Yeah, that's it a was, great reason. It was a great reason. It cost me like thirteen bucks. It was unreal. That was a big steak too. That was a huge steak. I gotta give a quick shout out to Miller's Meats chicken wings. Um, Ooh, they dude. are fantastic. Like unreal. The Miller's quality Meats, everything you is get is worth mm -hmm. going in there for. That's the uh, only place I get my chicken wings from. Yeah, and then I came home and I had I was gonna I'm gonna keep being productive, and I sat down. And I took a nap, and what then I productive woke up. Yeah, I woke up like two hours later, so I was almost asleep. <laughs> and then, uh, you know what? I washed I washed and cleaned the inside of my car. That car has never been cleaner. It, it took me like two hours to clean my car. So let me get this straight. The only productive thing you did today was... Take a nap. Clean your, clean your car. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? The wife left me a big list of stuff to do. It's going to be a mad dash to get that shit done in the morning. I'll tell you that. All right. So I'm going to paint a little picture here for everybody. Me and Pat, we've been brothers for 30 years. and uh, Wait, wait. Checking the math. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've been brothers for 30 years. and uh, Remember when my... I had a better 29th party than Pat had a 30th? Ooh. I, didn't, I didn't get a 30th. That okay. digs deep. That Why you got to do that? Why you got to do that to me? Just saying. But my parents would go away. They'd leave me and Pat alone. And we would divvy up the cleaning when they would, right before they'd come back. So I would do mine over the course of the weekend. <laughs> Pat was notorious for, hey, Pat, are you going to do your dishes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What time are mom and dad home? I don't know, 2 o'clock? Yeah, I'll do them. Don't worry. No word of a lie. One fifty, he's filling the sink, doing the dishes, and they walk in the door, and he sit, he'd sit there like he had been done everything for hours. Well, yeah. I think it's called being efficient, Matt. No, Loser. it's not. It's called being an idiot. Big dork. But yeah, so yeah, it was a fun day. I got to watch some wrestling on my big TV, which I never get to do, you know, so here we are. Uh, I'm pretty pumped to talk about wrestling today because, frankly, we got some good shit on tap tonight. Holy. You know what else good stuff on tap? What was that? Kilter Brewing Company. Can I just say, Matt, that was a hell of a segue. I'm getting good at the mix. You crushed that segue, buddy. I might, not, I might need to throw away the stingers, guys. Like, if you're just going to do that, I don't have to do any splicing. Like, this is good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Seamless. So, yeah, Especially we, uh... when we call it out to stop us talking about kilter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we uh, we went to, my, I guess, my home brewery just down the street, 20-minute walk. You. 
Yeah, well, Jordan Jordan walked and bitched the whole way about walking for 20 minutes to get to It was a long it. walk. Oh, to be fair, it was, it was quite humid out. It's 20 minutes. You, have, you guys are sucks, man. Like, I didn't complain walk. about it. I'm just I'm, I'm saying I understand where Listen, Jordan's I got coming. a taste of the high life, and I'm never going back. <laughs> so, yeah, we get like there. The and, uh, <laughs> guys, first impressions of Kilter Tap Room. What do you guys think? Uh, do you want like our first impressions? No, I want just like just the look of it. Let's start with the okay. Because if we're starting on a timeline, uh, things <laughs> went low to high for me. Um, I really, I really liked it. Like, it's not exactly in a place um, like neighborhood wise. Like, if you think of like a TCB or a non such, they're in very either busy or trendy places. And Kilter is not in a busy or trendy place. It's right next to a factory of some sort. Um, it's at the end of a random road. It's called a hidden gem. That's what it is now. It, it's exactly that because yeah, you is. walk in and the outside doesn't do the inside much justice. Um, so what's the, design, what's the decor? Hawaii meets industrial, something like that. Like island meets industrial. Clean, clean Hawaiian. That's what I looked at it. Uh, I, I echo the, the building is beautiful. You walk in, it's spacious, it's open. Um, in today's times, with the uh, the whole uh, COVID going on, didn't feel too full. Uh, I did like that they went with uh, the ticket system mm. to get in, so that was good. The food truck outside, I know a lot of breweries are doing that. Uh, I think that's a really smart idea. And um, then I guess we can kind of get to the service at the beginning. Jordan? Yeah, well, George... Just before we do that, I thought they were almost too reserved in their seating. Like, that's how much space they had. Like, I looked mm -hmm. around and, like, I could see that on a busy night with COVID not being an issue, having four times as many people packed. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Packed. Like, it's – and also on top of that, like, they have space to go down the back into where the beers are and just rope off or wall that off too. Yeah. Yes, So absolutely. they have some runway in there to make it as I, uh, as they want. I was, like – I really love their like kilter neon light sign that they had in there. I thought that yeah, was super that cool was looking. That was really cool. Yeah, super cool looking. It's like really hits you in the face when you walk in. It's super cool. So, anyways, when you get there off the bat, um, <laughs> I fail to understand that um, they wanted to seat everyone and they were they were serving people in order. Um, and I was obviously pretty excited. Uh, you know, kilter was my number two brewery in Winnipeg until this launch. Whoa. Um, wow. And so, and the way I, they started, that's hard to believe. At the start, I was like, <laughs> it was 15 minutes in, and I was like, holy shit, I need a flight right now. I have, you've limited me to two hours, and I have no time to waste here. Um, but the lady yeah, was super nice. IG, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's an understatement because I think Jordan was ready to get up and flip a table if they didn't get him a flight right away. <laughs> like, I just, absolutely. I just saw the clock kicking down and I'm like, that's at least a flight of beer. I'm not going to be able to drink now. <laughs> I'm behind. To be fair, the weakest beer from a ABV per perspective on their menu was 5%. I think you were going to be okay. <laughs> I can sure. confirm I was okay. Uh, yeah. by 11 o'clock and whatever <laughs> happened after that. So in, uh, in all seriousness, though, um, not there wasn't a beer on their menu I didn't like. Um, I had Waves mm -hmm. for the first time, and it was amazing. Oh, that was good. I had Fog Machine, which was a double IPA I gave a 4 to because it was stunning how good you that I'm was. I'm sorry, time out. You gave it a what? I gave it a 4. Uh, and that just, Whoa. not to mention, I think, like, the overall presentation, um, them printing the beers fresh on, um, yeah. or writing them out each time, had it, added a little bit of class to it. Um, I love the idea of, like, you know, bringing your own cards and having enough room to play cards and, and have a couple drinks. Um, so I think if you... If you want to go somewhere and have kind of, like, some fancier food items, I th still think Nonsuch is where you go. But if you're just going for beers, I just don't think anyone does beer better in the city than Kilter right now, top to bottom. I mean... What was what was your favorite beer of the night, Jordan? Oh, Jesus. Fog oh, wow. Machine surprised me the most. I couldn't believe it when I had it. Your I reaction? Was, I thought you were making fun of me. I couldn't believe it. it um, and... and I would say, and this is funny, so drinking from a tap... I actually like Slurpee more than Space Jam. Can I was a Space Jam guy, mm -hmm. but tapped um, mm -hmm. Slurpees just had a way of just disappearing over and over and over again. 
I had a lot of Slurpees while we were there, and you know what? I gave Slurpees not the greatest marks on Untap out of the can, but on tap, like I would have bumped it up like at least half a point. It was super good on tap. It was unbelievable. That was my favorite beer the whole night. Yeah. Waves was good, but Slurpee, give I will drink that by the gallon. Yeah. Unbelievable. For me, yeah, I really, really enjoyed Waves. That's like that. It's hoppy, but it's not IPA. Like it's very sessionable in that regard. What knocked my socks off from a tap perspective, because it was good from a can, but uh, was Cool Beans. Oh, I, had, I didn't have that one. I didn't get oh, that one. Dude, that I got was good. That cool was Beans good. on tap was, yeah, probably a half point better. I know it this is fantastic. picky, but the only thing for me is just put that in a chilled glass or like a frosted glass, Ooh. and I think they I think they've, they got it over the goal line, right? That's Ooh. all it is for me with stouts is I love like a super uh, frosted glass. Um, and people who are big stout people will tell you you don't drink a stout ice cold. But See, I, I love my stout ice cold. I love my stout. I like says, my who says stout, stout people are right cold. all the time? Who says stout people are right all the time? Stout people. Yeah, they're pretty stout. Oh. They are. <laughs> yeah, oh, there it is. Stout. But no, in all seriousness, everybody fucking just run to kill oh, You don't need there. tickets anymore. You know what? I told I told the wife it's twenty minute walk. Yeah, if I got nothing to do on a Friday, and she wants to tag along. Word on word on the I'm street going. is the Schofield family might be making um, a trek there this Friday. That's how Ooh. much it might be. A so back nobody to back go, weekend. and if you go, bring noise canceling headphones. Yeah, the Schofields the all army. yell. They We're legitimately the all yell, and you'll see Johnny in the corner just sipping his beer, and he'll be the quietest one there. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay to be the quietest hey, one there. Hey, hey, Good for Johnny. It's, hey, it's it's tough to be. You don't want to be the loud one in the Schofield family. That's tough competition. Pat, were we? I forget. Were we doing chug it, sip it, um, whatever yeah. the last thing is for this? <laughs> yeah, let's. So, so if you want to give Kilter Tap Room their opening, their new facility, you want to cheers it, sip it, or chug it. What do you want to give it? Is it pretty consensus? I think. Yeah, chug it, but that's going to be a rough chug. Yeah. <laughs> I had to chug a Juicy before we left the hotel we were at before, and my stomach was like, I don't know about that, Chief. It was a rough go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for sure cheers. I oh, mean, yeah. I'm going back all the time. How could you not cheers it? Oh, no, wait. Fuck, I did that backwards. Yeah, it's you did. But that's oh, okay. Sorry, oh, no, thank man. you. This it's is okay. You don't, it. you don't normally do it. It's okay. You just sound dumb now. You're dumb. Damn it. Cheers it. <laughs> What yeah, a dork. No, it was, what, uh, a, what a dork. As I'm sorry. Said, never, I never do <laughs> these. Oh, what, you, How what, you don't pay happen? attention? We're at episode nine. You don't listen uh, to them back over? <laughs> only a hundred times, probably. And just for that, yeah, Jordan, seriously. Just for, the, just for that, you got to start the beer review this week. That's fair. Um, when we were at Kilter, um, there was some reminiscing going on about some of our favorite beers in Winnipeg over mm. the years. And I sadly have a bit of a shorter runway on that, uh, having moved here. God, I'm not even sure what seven years ago now. Um, but it's only I been will, that long. Eh? It's been that long, but I will say yeah, one of the Winnipeg first... was such a nice place eight years ago. Then yeah, it was a lot more boring. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I remember one of the first craft beers I had here was Half Pint St. James Pale Ale, and oh, I hadn't had one in a long time. And then today I was in the, I was actually out at the Roblin beer store, mm. um, and I the was. Pearls in them? The Charles won one, yeah, and I yep. was looking around, and I was saw this clay and a half pints, and I just got a little smile because it reminded me of our great Saturday evening, and I decided to bring it home and give it a drink. Um, something I love about this beer is it leans a little more towards, like, an amber than most pale ales, I think. It's not going to be overtly hoppy like it's very smooth without feeling cheap or tasting cheap and i think you guys know what i mean by tasting cheap like yes you know what i mean like it 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 pays like a little less than a more expensive craft beer but it drinks like about as good of a pale ale or a lager of those basic beers you can have so um this is a four for me just because of what, just because what you could do with it. And it's just simple. Like you could drink 12 of these, you could play beer pong with these, you could sip this. I yeah. think it's one of the most versatile beers in the city. And I, I really, really like it. Wow. One of the first kegs I ever partook in oh, was a keg. keg of St. James Pale Ale. And I didn't know it was St. James Pale Ale. And I had a keg of something else the next time. And I will never not have a craft beer cake. From I, I think, 
that was the first brewery I ever visited. Didn't we go there for like a bachelor party man or yes, something? Yes, we did. We went for a brewery tour at that. And then yeah. we went to the, the go-kart place. Yeah, Speed World. Yeah, that was good stuff. I yeah. suck at you drove, you drove the speed limit. Yeah, because I was scared because I'd been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was you, a young pop. Did, just cops just come in onto the track oh, and no, yeah, their go-kart me, police remember, cars. Everybody was laughing at me and I was just having a great time. Like I took forever to finish, but I'm just going the speed limit. I don't want to bump anybody. Just out for a Sunday drive. It was great. You're, I great. You're just, a, just a great friendly race car driver. <laughs> oh, go up. Move ahead. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Rubbing is not racing if you're Pat. Rubbing is not racing. <laughs> no, I don't like that. That scares me. People get hurt. Pat, what are you ahead, drinking? Pat. Me? What am I drink? Uh, I'll go. I'll go. You go. So I'm, uh, I got uh, Winnipeg Beer uh, Brew Works. I was going to say Beer Works, but it's Brew Works. Brew Works. Um, they are a brewery that shares. Me and Matt talked about this. They share or they contract space from Torque, correct? Yes. Yeah. They're so, one of – there's four – well, there's Torque and then three others. Really? Yeah, I'm drinking wow. another – I'm drinking one tonight. Wow, okay. So, yeah, they're a nice – they got a couple – three three beers they put out, three or four? I believe they have three. They're about to put out a fourth. Yeah, so I'm drinking the Rot beer. Uh, so ah. they they specialize in the German style beers, and uh, this is their red lager. Man, I'm telling you, this is some good shit. Ooh, this <laughs> that's some high praise. Like it is delicious. Like you can taste the roasted malt. It's smooth. It's got a nice finish. It's just like, and the color. Look at that thing. Look how dark that is. That's it's dark, but it's not like opaque mm. no like it's super tasty like i can this i wouldn't i've never said this about a red ale red lager or nothing i could drink this all night like really? it is sessionable to shit matt Sessional, it's baby. unbelievable yeah so it's really good i would go out and buy a dozen of them and keep in my fridge and be happy all day uh it's and it's not overly boozy it's only five percent it's good man on on tap follow me at pat Ghani. i'm giving this like 4.25. 4.25? Yeah, like, I really enjoyed this one. No, I mean... You know, if, if you're... That being said, Winnipeg Brew Works, I'm looking up and down the internet to try to find your website so I can shout out your beers and you one. don't have a website. Like, like GoDaddy.com, man. Like, give <laughs> but you know what? And that was the frustrating no, you part. Have I was, to now. You have I was, to. I, I know. I was looking. I was trying to find their website. These were home brewer, These were home brewers, I believe. That yeah, but just started. But then to, to even find their stuff on the Torque website's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's like on the third page, I think. Second. Or yeah, third page. and like it's 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 really damn like it's super good. So like they I, have they have their Rota beer. They have the Dunk Ale, which is their dark ale. Yeah. Or their dark. Uh, I think it's a brown ale. Yeah. And then they have their pills, Ooh, which is they a have a brown beer. ale. It's a brown ale or is it dark? It's, well, if they have a brown ale, Pat's going to get up all in that. That's, I can't remember. I, I'd have to I'm look I'm all about it up. that life. I'm all about that. I'm all about that life. So, it was Matt, good. finish it out there, buddy. I uh, am also doing a brewery that contracts out of Torque. I am doing La Shop, La Brosserie, La Shop. Oh, un peu la français. Shop. Oh, ben yeah. oui. uh, it's, uh, I'm doing their Caddy Pale Ale, which is, uh, I believe, his only beer. It is the only beer. That's the one yeah. I got in my fridge. Yeah. So, um, Mars, uh, Marcel Dupas, I'm assuming is how you pronounce it. I'm assuming he's a, f a francophone. I would assume. Um, he <laughs> and if not, if not, he's a fraud. <laughs> like, I hope he, I hope he's. going to sneeze saying his name. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So, wouldn't so it be. <laughs> he, um. <laughs> he's done. <laughs> just done put up with this stuff all freaking okay. Saturday too oh my god anyways uh, yeah so he's contracting space out of uh, Torque oh, yeah. Caddy named after Caddy Lake here in Manitoba <laughs> this beer keep going keep going fire I can't um, bustle through um, it that uh, we went through the first live murder in podcast yeah. history well you'll hear it on Thursday I guess it's like a three day old murder yeah exactly <laughs> So he has brewed essentially, much like you were talking about, Pat, something very sessionable. It's light, it's smooth, it's clean, very balanced, but hoppy enough that I'm into it. Um, it is very, very good. 
Uh, I'm going to give it a four. Follow me at on, uh, on untapped. That's what I was trying to say. At Ghani Matt with... Tooties. Tooties. And, we should, uh, we should but, add something yeah. now. Tooties and... <laughs> <sighs> but if you are looking for something local that's very sessionable, I think we've just offered you up three very, very, very good alternatives or options. Some newer ones will. too. I know like we kind of hit the hit it. I mean, next week I'm going straight back to Trans Canada and all of you, you will know why in a bit. So But you know what? I think after this week we've hit every local brewery in the city. No, we have not. No? What are we missing? Uh Ox uh what's it called? Oxus. Oxus, Oxus. we haven't okay. done. Um and we farmery, haven't done the black canvas. Done. Farmery. I've never I've never all oh, farmery? Oh. Black oh, well. Canvas is the fourth <laughs> brewery that brews out of Torque. Uh, and they only have the Arctic Stout, so and we can yeah. only I think okay. we can only get them six per order. So okay, someone's I gonna get have it. We them. haven't done all the breweries. You can get them at I the queue. I get oh, it. Oh, one one thing before we go to the beer news of the week, I uh, took my first trip to. Um, oh, nice! What'd you take? <laughs> uh, oh, I I just got it. There you go. There it is. <laughs> it clicked. Uh, not a, not a drug guy. <laughs> no, no, not really. Don't do uh, drugs, kids. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> took my first trip out to uh, Regent, to the well, not my first trip to Regent, but my first trip out there to go to the beer boutique. And Ooh. I will say, if you are in that end of the city, beer boutique doing a great job out there. Uh, they had a bunch of stuff that I couldn't get at any LCs. Um, obviously, you can go to the queue and get pretty much everything, but. I think Charleswood Beer Store is doing a good job. The Riverside and Beer Boutique showed up to the Beer Boutique. They did a – I was very impressed with their selection. Even my wife found something. So Wow. Good for that. That's yeah. pretty good. There. So I guess uh, we'll, we'll uh, recap here. I gave the Rota Beer 4.25 from Winnipeg Brew Works. Jordan gave his St. James Pale Ale, correct? That's right. From Half Pints, he gave it a 4, believe it or not. And That's Matt, what did you give uh, – the shop there. I gave Caddy Pale Ale from La Shop a four. Okay, and uh, that leaves us with one piece of business. We will go to the Winnipeg Beer News of the Week. Thank you, Patrick. Happy to report live from the Winnipeg Beer News of the Week. Uh, this week, we have a few <laughs> different things you need to know about. Um, tomorrow, Vessel Beer, So, I, but I say tomorrow, check that. Two days ago, Vessel Beer will have released <laughs> something. Listen, all right, there's, it looks like we a, have other jobs. I have only have so much time to edit. Leave me alone. It looks um, like a lemon meringue, I think. I was going to go the same direction. I, and here's the thing. That made me nervous right away. Because as we saw this week with Barnhammer, they came out with Sweetie. And if you, if it's, I know it was a key lime kettle sour. But just if you, if it's the name of a pie, I expect creamy. You know, like I want mm-hmm. a milkshake IPA type beer. If it's if it's a name of a pie, and unless it's like a pecan pie, because that lends itself more to like an amber. But anyways, that's not the point. I like pie. Jesus, down I that like rabbit hole. Pie. All right, but um, no. Long story short, Vessel Beer uh, two days ago will have told you what their uh, <laughs> beer of the week is. I will probably be drinking it by the time this comes out. Some follow up news: Nonsuch has released a black currant kettle sour. Had to Google mm. what black currant yeah, is. Yeah, what the hell is it? All right, it? let's let's. You know what? I like how on a weekly basis, like one of us just raises our hand and we're like, "Hey, what the hell is that?" Um, a I black currant like- is a woody shrub in the family of a. Oh, good. This is an easy word. Gross lurikai grown berry. Um, Let me guess that. Listen, it looks like a grape. It's the color of a grape and looks like a cherry. Just have one and tell me if you like it. You know what? <laughs> not such. Make it easier to figure out what's in your beers. Okay. You know, no, not like such. Use, you do you. You use, do you. Not use such. guava. <laughs> and uh, speaking of which, let's talk to oh. what is oh boy the only news that you need to hear this week. <laughs> this Thursday um, at nine p.m. for you guys, but noon for me. If you guys get these before I do, I will kill you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try. Hold on. The online I'm store. Sorry. It. No, no, no. Time out. Hold on. We're, I'm trying to read this. Okay. This Thursday, you can order at noon and you can pick up at four. Okay. The Guava Sour is gracing Winnipeg with its presence. 
I will be there bright and early with a lawn chair working from an air card because I will make sure I get at least eight of these at minimum off the bat. So no big deal, TCV, if you let me down. Oh, boy. You know, or you could just, you know, at least you're releasing your quaver beer, unlike Barnhammer, who just forgot that. Oh, boy, it was still on that eight. Still on that so eight. <laughs> that's the biggest news of the week. Guava continues to terrorize the other fruits in the bear game um, just because it's the, you know, it's the third best fruit on the planet and the number one to go with beer. And that's your Winnipeg Beer News of the Week. And thank you, Jordan. And I really appreciate you uh, pretending you're in a newsroom. That really added to it this week. I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed I that use thoroughly. That journalism degree for something. God knows I, I don't use I just, it now. I mean, before we uh, get out of here and uh, we come back after a break, I'm just going to say that was like the cleanest opening segment we've ever done. I think it's because we haven't been drinking before coming That's on air. That's true. Yeah. I only had one Bud Light before we came on we air. We weren't so. drinking before we came on air? <laughs> okay. Some of us worked. Some, some right. of us worked. Some of us had to put our kids to bed. All right, so uh, we'll uh, we'll put a little bowl on that, and we'll take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking uh, a lot of wrestling, a lot of random wrestling, and it's all fantastic. Oh, Michael, this is going to be fun to watch. And we are back. We are so back. Oh, what oh, you got there, Matt? Too what slow. You got there? And see, it didn't spill on my crotch. Oh, oh you I got thought, to drop this I thought staycation. tropical staycations automatically came with half of it on your on your. So, crotch. so you, so what you're saying is you didn't do the pre-shake before you opened it? Uh, no, oh. because I'm not an idiot. Ooh. Sorry, my dad doesn't like when we call each other idiots. Yeah. Did so... he say anything about? Oh, okay, you're both idiots. If he doesn't no, so, like when you guys argue, but I don't think he said anything about me making. Fun. No, he said he doesn't give a shit about you. You can say nah, he, he doesn't even remember your name half the time. Mike, yeah, calls you suck. You, calls you James. Calls you Drew. Oh wow, that's that's really offensive being called James. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are, buddy. So yeah, anyways, so we didn't really know what direction to go in this week because there was so much good stuff on wrestling TV this week. So we're going to hit NXT. We're going to hit Hunt on Raw or SmackDown, really. But no, I mean, uh, SmackDown. There was one thing that. We're gonna oh, get, yeah, fair, fair. We're going to get contentious about it, I think. Um, and I we're don't all, think so. I think we're all in agreement. Uh -huh. I have a couple questions for you guys about that. Oh, boy, okay. Okay, so let's start with NXT because Jordan loves him some NXT. Um, you should. I started off the week. I remember, Pat, um, you were out doing some being a great fiancé with your lady on Wednesday night, if I remember right, or you were doing something and you weren't at your TV. And... Uh, Matt, I'm not sure. You were at the end of the Forks. I was at baseball. Right. And at oh, the Forks. For yeah, the sorry. And at the birthday. Forks. And you were at baseball. Mm. And I'm sitting there just settling in for my Wednesday night of chicken wings, beer, and uh, AEW. Before you continue, with... before you continue, what kind of chicken wings? Oh, first of all, <clears throat> jerk. <laughs> you go to Miller's Meat, okay? okay? And then you have to get go to Lux Barbecue to get some meat church rubs. That's the only way to do it. Okay. Then after that, you barbecue them at around 425, uh, not indirect, but direct heat for about 18 to 19 minutes. And then you do the drums a tiny bit longer just to get the char. Um, and then I put a barbecue sauce right at the end. Um, that's a white barbecue sauce from meat church as well. So anyway, we are officially so, bros, bumps, and barbecue. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm yeah, so as Pat said, beer. I'm not particular at all. Very easygoing. So, <laughs> um, so basically, the reason I'm starting with AEW, Pat, not to hijack what you said, is because oh, okay. I sat there oh. about halfway through <laughs> yes, you and texted, texted us. us, or you guys, and went, I think I'm watching the best wrestling TV show I've watched in a really long time. It was freaking awesome and i think it was because it, it was almost like AEW up the ante or I, I actually was sitting there wondering if like turner threatened to cancel them if they didn't jump there <laughs> because like it, there wasn't a ton of like quote-unquote story no but it was just like little segments it was almost like skits of great wrestling like the eddie kingston bottom line eddie kingston came out and in two lit minutes the show on fire was like now one of my 10 favorite wrestlers Okay. okay. I mean, his I, body took away from it, like not to be that guy, but he didn't look the part. No. But... You know what though? They sold him really good. The first thing they yeah, said they was did. he had to sell his boots to pay his mortgage. I was like, holy shit! What a story to tell right away. Yeah. How much, much for really your nice boots? boots? Like that might just be a bad initial purchase. Wrestling boots? <laughs> no, wrestling boots are hella expensive, man. 
Most guys don't they just wear sneakers and then put like the pads over? Like AJ Styles Loser, doesn't wear it. losers like John Cena do. Oh, AJ Styles wears wrestling boots. Does he wear boots? Okay, but, okay. So, but, but to the but yeah. to the Eddie Kingston issue, Kate, I'm all for citing Eddie Kingston. I think he proved himself to be a great talent. But I mean, for that night, if you sign Eddie Kingston, where do you go from there? Eddie Kingston's an attraction. Is he? Because Eddie Kingston can come out, cut a promo, everyone's like, "Holy smokes!" And then he wrestles like a hardcore style match. He's not going to wrestle a wrestling match. He, I don't. I, think... s- I see Eddie Kingston. If you want to bring Eddie Kingston in and make him like worth it, don't wrestle. Be an attraction wrestler, but be you a manager. You know where you stick him? You yeah. stick him in a uh, stable. Yeah, and he's the mouthpiece. Stable. He's I don't mouthpiece. know where you put him in AEW right now. I can't really picture it. Like I feel like the inner circle's a little more um, slapsticky than what he would be. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who were the um, – there was a group of guys in Ring of Honor for a while who were, like, kind of these, like, rough and tumble. Oh. The Briscoe brothers? Yes. That's yeah. who I was thinking of. Like, Eddie Kingston seems like a Briscoe brother. That does not like the guy. Briscoe brothers. I hate and the I Briscoe don't brothers. know anything about them. I just yeah. know, like, if I'm trying to think of the style. But then I remember, like, the thumbtacks hitting the ground. And I was just like, what are we doing? We're mm-hmm. Like, we're 14 minutes in. Yeah, I know. Like, where are we That's supposed awesome. to go? I, and... I just, I worry, you know, to change pace a little bit with Cody. He's doing these matches every week, and it's different styles, and it shows how versatile he is. They're, but they're teasing, they're teasing how that too much. Yeah. They're t- also teasing the Tully Blanchard stuff. I really yeah. like I think the with key it. with this, too, is they're not doing live shows, remember. Like, they have a whole week to reload before going and doing these mm-hmm. matches again, right? So I think yeah. that's really important to the longevity. But um, the first hour alone, like, MJF just continues to be, in my opinion, the best thing in wrestling. Yeah. Um, I think he's untouchable. I think his mic work is untouchable. I think oh. it, he's just incredible. The Butcher and he the Blade. The squatch. Yeah. He wrestled the squash, and I was and like... And it didn't feel like a squash. Fantastic. The blade missing the table made me laugh my ass off. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 they yeah. should be better. I no, think... They're, I, they're I, I they like are. the butcher and the blade. I really do. I like the I just, gimmick. I like the look. I mean, I, as I you know. guys said, uh, it became all about the Young Bucks, because one complaint I had about the show is I'm like, why are they doing this match? Like, what's... Because they suck. The, point? the Young Bucks suck. I mean, they just, it was just a spot match. I did appreciate them, like, washing their hands. The butcher. I thought there was, like, little moments that were really funny. There was also some dangerous spots where, like, they didn't clear the knives out of the way, and they were, like, slamming each other on the tables. And all I could look at was the butcher knife, and I'm like, can we fucking move that, please? Like, I don't need to watch <laughs> this is not someone's good, right? arm come off. But, yeah, there was a lot of good shit. Sorry, not but, to keep going. You guys go ahead. One of, the but, really, yeah. one of the really good ones, Jordan, you mentioned it to me, and you were laughing when you were sending it to us. I know you were. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lance Archer. Lance Archer, he disappeared oh, for a little bit, God. and now this was huge to get Lance Archer back on track. Just put a guy through the ceiling. He yeah, put a guy that was the, the best thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah, that's amazing. I like I spit take my beer <laughs> and like quickly cleaned it up and reround so I could send you guys this Speaking video. Of beer. Oh, is that a prickly oh, pear yeah. or a raspberry? Raspberry. Nice, good call. You you know what I thought it was good, but it was a little bit too much. Was the the inner circle with uh. Or was that was that this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he dropped the orange juice on them? Oh no, that was a couple weeks ago. Um, a couple weeks. Oh, was that oh, okay? That I, I, I oh, this week. week oh, Sammy Guevara came back this week. Sorry. Yeah, that's my next question. Too soon to bring him back? No. Yes. No. No. I, I think, I think at the end of the day, it was still four years ago, and if it's you, just have to move on at some point. And I think if you bury him too long, you risk him losing the steam he put up. I think you have to do business I, at the same time. I don't think but he's I, ever going to be buried as long as he's associated yeah. with Jericho, though. Jericho will, will will make him, and whenever he comes back, I just I get it. Four years ago, but it what it was, it's it I was too it, quick. I to think back. the way you have to bring him back too, it's going to be uncomfortable no matter what. Like when they were all like there hugging him and being so happy he was back, I'm like, uh, that's yeah. odd. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's ever going to be a point where you're just like, you just have to, I think if you're a company and this sucks to say, in my opinion, you just have to act like, yeah, no, I knew right. and we're keeping it moving. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, beyond that, I thought, like, the Brian Cage promo was solid. Man, okay, hold on. Darby Allen, when he got hit in the back and went yeah. into the ropes, Ricky I had, Stark like, gave a, a concussion. holy shit. Did he really? He, he was, yeah, he gave him a concussion. Like, what a fucking idiot that Starks guy is. Like, 
Darby just <sighs> came back. Like, Dar- what are you Darby, doing? Though, Darby does – he flops. Yeah. His bumps are kind of floppy. He's, 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 how much do you think he weighs? Oh, one, 130, 140 maybe? Yeah. No, yeah. realistically 150. Yeah, maybe like 150, 160. He's a little fella though. Like yeah. I get Solid nervous whenever he's up against Brian a big Cage guy. Is go- Brian Cage tosses him around and yeah. like legitimately is tossing him around. Yeah. So let's move on NXT now. NXT, you know what? I, I have been slacking on my NXT, but I had some time today. Popped her in there on the DVR and I watched it. Man, what a solid show. The one thing I hated, that whole letting um, – What's his name? The champion, Lee. Uh, God, Keith Lee. I always forget his first name. Keith Lee vacating the North American Championship. That pissed me off to no end because I it was just a, it was a ratings that. grab. It was a ratings grab to make him the double champion. That's all it was. That's what that's what wrestling is. I know, but I I but I it. liked I liked the I liked the explanation they gave though that he wouldn't be able to give proper attention or effort to both and. We're getting a triple threat tournament and a ladder match out of this. Yeah, Let's if go. I can get an NXT ladder match out of the deal, I'm, Listen, I'm all in. I'm also, okay. I forgot about it real quick. Bronson Reed winning. I mean, talk. I mean, Shocker. Yeah, but let's be honest. The second he won, I'm like, oh, there's our um, guy to hold up things while people bump. Yeah. Right? Much, like, you're yeah. looking at them building the ladder match. You're like, oh, there's but Bronson. Also, he's going to hold up. He's going to do a ladder spingy thing. He's going to be at the bottom of a pile and, and yeah. like, blow himself out. He's going to hold shit while other people need to jump off it. Yada, yada, yada. So this this week, Finn Balor's winning, right? Absolutely. He's got to. I yeah. hope so. Because, you know, Loomis he's my isn't guy. ready. Loomis isn't ready. Loomis is awesome. By the way, that, match, that <laughs> match, when that came on the screen, oh, boy. <laughs> he, needs a, he needs a finisher. Oh I don't like the choke finish. Karrion Cross already does it, like, Give him a different The choke finisher. finish was meant to be so that he could, like, pet them on the head. But it doesn't – it's – like, even an untrained eye could see that you're not choking anybody with that. Like, there's no restriction on either side. Like, it just doesn't look – But just the way he moves in the ring, his oh. overall presentation yeah. and he look – He should be doing oh. – there's, like, a, a – I mean, now we're going to get really deep in the weeds, but this is your YouTube homework. There's, like, an Eddie Bravo jiu-jitsu move called the Twister – which he yeah. should be doing for his finisher because it That'd looks cool. gnarly, and the second you release the legs, they are just going to be sitting right in his lap. My, my one issue with Dexter Loomis is if he ever goes to the main roster, there's not going to be any in between. Either Vince is going to turn him into a comedy act or he's going to turn him into a Bray Wyatt-type character. True. He can never go up. There's a lot of guys that yeah. shouldn't go up, but they will, and they're going to ruin it. But then there's guys that go up and come back, and I love them. Like Finn, yeah, true. Yep. Zango, give me all the Brizango. I laugh every week time I see them. Um, I really liked, uh, what's her name, Martinez. Yeah. Starting to, I think that you could build a female stable in mm-hmm. NXT and start to really push that with like Robert Stone being the person who catapults a few of these ladies. If And if any of you two say that Karrion Cross isn't in your top three favorite wrestlers right now, you're a liar. I was just going to say, okay, so Karrion Cross is... <laughs> Top three? Yeah. For sure my top five. Karrion Cross, Cody, and Chris Jericho without even thinking about it. Mm. No. No, no, no. So MGF, MJF is like I, undoubtedly I need, I, top three. I need some payoff with MJF before I put him in there. He's doing I'm, his, I'm still holding out hope on with, Seth Rollins too. You, need, you know what? I, yeah. A lot of guys don't need a belt. I don't think MJF needs a belt, but I think him having a belt would just be amazing. Can you imagine because him be, being the AEW champion? He'd be insufferable. He'd be insufferable. Like, he needs to beat Cody when Cody's at his weakest and take the TNT title and then never defend it. Every yeah. week, find a way to not defend it. Go the complete opposite. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. That's, you get, and then lose it to Wardlow eventually on a big-time heel turn. Yeah. Sh- or Jordan. Turn. Jordan, stop. Oh. Stop it. But the other, the other thing I was going to say about the carrying cross match is Dominic... Dijakovic? Dijakovic. Dijakovic. Is he just the new Cassius Ono? Yes. I don't that understand how he is. <laughs> like, he's unremarkable just because he's just like a tall white guy with no great gimmick. If he had if he had uh, an accent to go with his name. Oh. Like, oh, so then, then he becomes Rusev. Yeah, but like at least there's like... The name that's makes not a no bad sense. Thing. Rusev had a great I know, the, run with the name, yeah. the name doesn't 
go with the person. I just, he comes His out. athleticism is amazing. Yeah, he comes out, and I'm just like, oh, great. You're like, you're here to lose to whoever the top talent is. Like, that's your job. And you this, know? Is gonna like, a, this is going to be a hell of a, a match. A good match, yeah. Um. Oh, I thank you for bringing that up. The carry and cross kick in the stair spot oh, was so nasty good. looking while also being pretty safe if you actually looked at, like, how they did it. Because his head was behind the ring post, yeah. and he kicked the top one, and the bottom one was there. But it looked... Oh, it looked so. gnarly. It looked bad. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to finish out. It was a we're good talking, week of Wednesday talking about, wrestling. We've been talking a lot Man. about charisma, athleticism, and potential. And Iowa football. They're... Ugh. Iowa. Iowa. They are giving Big E a singles push. Hallelujah. Well, are they giving it to him, or has he fallen ass backwards into one? Whatever, Either way, man, I'm excited about it. Eventually. He is the most talented member of the New Day, and he deserves a singles push. I am curious if we look back at this and ask if Biggie benefited or suffered from not having a crowd. I think it's going to be suffered. I think this push isn't going to go the way we think it will. No, you know what? I think we all think it's going to end title, and I don't. If no, it ends, if it happen. ends with an intercontinental title or a U.S. title, it's not worth it. This yeah. needs to be a world championship. Win. That's what I'm saying. This needs to be. This needs to be okay. Kofi and Xavier come back, and they're the tag team. They're still the new day. Don't break them they, up. No, no. But I, I think Too much he kind of takes over that spot that Kofi's been occupying when he won his title and stuff. They become the support for Big E. I think, oh, he... And the, but I think the best part is they're fine with that. I think, like, oh, Kobe's absolutely. had his run in the sun, and he's cool. Xavier's pretty down with his video game, like, yeah. doing his stuff on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Biggie's the one who, like, And you know what, honestly? Get launched. When Kofi was getting that big push, the Kofi Mania one, the whole time I was watching him, I'm like, this should be Big E. I get why they gave it to Kofi. I understand it. He was, he's been there forever. But I felt like Big E is the guy in that group and should have been the guy to get that push. Now, here's my thing. I love me some Biggie. I love Biggie. Uh-huh. One of my, if he's not my top five, he's for sure in my top 10 okay. right now. Mm-hmm. Can he have consistently good enough matches with anybody yes. to be that guy? And I'm saying that as Braun Strowman is the champion. I but... think you start him off with, like, Cesaro's, right? Yeah. Like, you start him off with guys who you he's worked with before. You could put him in with Sheamus, Cesaro. Give him Dolph. Give him Dolph. Give, give him Dolph to start. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think? I know not to go slightly off, but I was wondering, was uh, Big E connected to the rumored Nation of Domination reboot? No. Uh, we were talking no. about MVP, Bobby Lashley, and um, uh, what's his name? Sean not Andrew. Not Bradshaw. Sheldon Benjamin. Sheldon and Benjamin and with Farouk. 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 And I actually was like, that they would been, be... Well, originally I, I, th- I thought the New Day was supposed to be the reboot of the that was of Yeah, it was kind of, that was kind of the gist when Xavier started it. But then they kind of threw the, threw the swerve on that when yeah. they were getting over. But yeah, no, the Big E thing is going to be interesting to watch. It's enough that I will probably watch SmackDown just for that at this yeah. point. Because... I want to see where it goes. Knowing the WWE, they'll push him to the top in two months. We'll have no long build. It'll be over, and we'll be able to talk about this. Do you want to? Do you want to say SummerSlam? He gets there. No. Mm. Oh, oh no, they got they got Wyatt and. Braun That's the other thing. Now. That's the other problem right now. Is your the fiend is getting get the belt? Yeah. At SummerSlam. Yeah. You can't feed. Big E to him right away. You can have Big E win eventually over the yeah. scene. Eventually. I can yeah. see but that you, happening. You can't, you can't, he can't be right away. I also, not to revert back before we move on, a quick update. Does anyone want to change their predictions for the Kenny Omega heel turn? Because I think the cleaner's coming pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, like what? Like, I think they, the cleaner's coming. It's like we talked about factor, that and they, a week they later. Played it. Yeah, they're slow playing and now it's like, okay, maybe next week. We get the cleaner. Because <laughs> okay. I thought it and I thought it didn't escalate right. Like last week he beats the piss out of Marco Stunt. And then the, this week he's just late coming out to help um uh, hang out, hangman. Okay, hangman. You yeah. know, it's like I think it should have been backwards. It should have been like he's out laid out to help hangman. Then he loses it against Marco Stunt. Like I love that we're gonna start seeing hopefully bad guy Kenny. Um, you got you gotta give us some because Kenny is a good guy is failing right now. Was that his best work? 
I mean, I, w- I didn't watch a lot of the... The cleaner the is Japan the best it, thing it was, his, it was his most interesting out of ring. Yeah. Like, because they built it back to him and Ibushi becoming the Golden Lovers again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, like, his best run, in my opinion, was his most recent one with... Uh, where he oh. had those those matches at the Tokyo Dome, but yeah. with Okada? and his match with Jericho was like, oh, I enjoyed yeah. the shit out of that lead up too. But yeah, I was curious. I thought that was the one. Th- I can't think of anything the else. It was God. just a fucking good week for wrestling. Great like, week. I was we haven't just, had we haven't had this good of a week in a long time. No, like that's why we're going so long on it. Like, yeah, I watched NXT. I had to watch it. I think Friday morning because I took well, the day off. And you know what? You know what? As too. as the week progressed, <laughs> I was like, oh, we have something to talk about. We can make a segment out of that, and then. Wednesday happened. I'm like, oh, okay, we can add that. And then Friday happened. I'm like, wow, this is going to be a really long second segment. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good, like, and I mean, I'm hoping it stays this way. It's just like comp- competition breeds growth. And I, I just, was just really say. hope it, it keeps, because that was the best wrestling I've seen on a Wednesday. Those two shows are something else. Well, speaking of segues, we're going to end this segment. And when we come back, we're going to go back to a great card of wrestling True. from 2002. Matt picked a banger. Vengeance 2002. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. An unreal card. I'm going to spoil it for you. I cheers it all freaking day. If you don't cheers it, you're dumb. Which ones? Is it? Is it cheers or is it chug? Cheers is, is it... good. Damn it. Oh, Got it. Damn. Got it. Got it. Got it. It's dangerous, JR. This is real dangerous. And we are back. We are back with a vengeance, Matt. Back with a vengeance. Segway oh, City right there, I see baby. what you did there. Segway City oh, all day. A vengeance. Back yeah. with a vengeance. You're it's not right a segue if we just came back from break. Feels yeah. like a segue. <laughs> you don't you know notice, have, you ever, have you ever ridden you a segue? Notice? Oh, you're nope. saying, oh, you're saying that we got on a leany scooter? What is wrong with this beer? Oh, oh he got not crunched. so funny now. He got crunched. Not he got so crunched. funny now. It's on my shirt. I, it's on my shirt. What beer was it? It's uh, Boombox. Oh. Uh... That's a beatbox, you dummy. Oh, that is a beatbox. You're Fuck. dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> Mike, Matt's calling Pat dumb again. I do it now just to make my dad mad. Yeah, so, deal uh... with it, Mr. Gagne. All right, so we are very excited. By the way, this is James that said that to you, Mr. <laughs> Kanye, James. <laughs> oh, that's going to be the best if we ever get him on as a guest one time, as an interview, and he's like, he calls you, I just, I'm going to tell him your name's James, and he's going to call you James the whole second. Oh, it's going to be great. Anyways, we are looking at, we are very excited, Vengeance 2002. Hey, you're very excited. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I, I like every second up. of this. So, Matt, as we always say, dial it up, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last episode of Bros Bumps. Here, <laughs> so, Vengeance 2002, I'm going to ignore you guys, was uh, July 21st, 2002, from Detroit, Michigan, and one of my personal favorite arenas. I've never been there. I just always liked watching events at it. You're not going to be TV. going there. <laughs> Joe Lewis it's Arena. It's fucking gone. Yeah, it's real gone. RIP, RIP Joe now Louis they have the Little Caesars Palace or something like that. <laughs> That's Shout hilarious. Out. Shout That's... out, Paul. <laughs> uh, there was 12,000 people there, which is a travesty. That place should have been packed to the rafters because this card deserved it. And, was it a uh, sellout? I Wow, well, there's 12,000. I I don't see that being a sellout of Joe Louis. It said 10,000 on – or no, yeah, you're right, 12 on Wikipedia. But I, I figured the Joe would hold more than that. For hockey, I'm sure it holds at least 16. Yeah, so like if you shrink the playing surface or quote unquote performing sur- surface, if you will, down mm. to a lot less, well, the Titan Tron takes up half the millenn- like half the entire stadium. Those and this back was back. a this mass. Was, mass. This, this was your moment with uh, Jordan Schofield, arena expert. <laughs> yeah, the Undertaker was on it, so thank God he had his motorcycle to get down there in under fucking forty-five minutes. Oh, I got I got a lot to say about the Undertaker. So, right. so this is like we are deep in the brand split. They're actually trying to sign guys on the show while we're going. Triple H signs with someone. Blah 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 blah. But the best thing about this, they have two different commentary teams. They start with Taz and Michael Cole, who both look like they haven't eaten in days. Probably because they were making no money, because they didn't care about Michael Cole. Michael Cole looked like a baby. <laughs> oh, man, was he young. Taz looks skinny? <laughs> yeah, he looks in shape. T- Taz skinny is... 
still a, like he still looks like a fire hydrant. He's built like a fridge. So. Yeah. So on this, he was built like a fire hydrant. Now he's built like a fridge. Seriously. Um, full disclosure, though, like ruthless aggression that era, two thousand two to what two thousand and seven, let's call it. Ish, yeah. I didn't watch wrestling as regularly. Oh, we didn't watch a lot of it. That, that was time. when I kind of stepped out of the bill too. Yeah. Yeah, so and it was Attitude good. Era Hangover, I call it a little bit. I, everything I watch, I'm watching that Ruthless Aggression uh, docuseries. Yeah. I'm like, man, there's a lot of good stuff in that era. And, and you know what I think it was? I think now we appreciate it more because the matches were such high quality. Yeah, because there was a lot of really, really, really high quality work. And they, they start off the night with a banger. Oh. Spike Dude. and Bubba Again, Ray Dudley. Before we get started, Meltzer gave this a three. Okay, well, that's... I, I mean... I, anyways. <laughs> I will say, I will hear no bad Bubba Ray Dudley. I'll hear no slander. I went to Zim for Halloween once. Complete, <laughs> complete outfit with the camo. glasses and everything. That's oh, awesome. Camo. I'll ask, I'll ask the Mama Schofield if she can find a picture or two. Because I think to. we'll... Put that, that on the Twitter that and the Instagram. Like Instagram. I'm putting that on the IG. So yeah, the... Bubba and Spike Dudley, uh, they go up against Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. So you know this match is going to be you can, terrible. Yeah, like, automatic. I wrote automatic. These two guys are in a match. The lowest I can get is a two out of five. Oh. At the lowest. There's no way to get a... It's going to be a horrible match of them if it's a two. So before the match even starts, Latino Heat, great gimmick. Oh, love it. Great gimmick. The sign in the crowd, worst mullet ever for Eddie Guerrero, pop me hard. <laughs> One Instagram had the Eddie Guerrero Rey Mysterio match where they were both trying to cheat each other out of the win the other day. Yeah. And I cackle laughed at oh. that. Like I forgot how good. And the best part about this was. match, it's a tables match. And the the pace on this match absolutely oh. relentless. So good. Do you think the Eddie, Dudley boys were like, oh, great, tables match. And then they're like, you're doing it with Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. And they're like, fuck. Boy, they because were stiff they too. Know... Eddie, and, Eddie and Chris were stiff as hell during this match. Uh, so basically, in the back, though, I'm sure Eddie and Chris went up to Bub and Spike and were like, hey, bump for us for like the first 10-ish minutes. And then you can put us through tables because we don't actually know how to do this. Yeah. Match. Yeah. Well, Eddie could frog. I mean, I could see like a frog splash and maybe a headbutt through or like a German, but the only thing in this match that I didn't like, and it still happens today. There's the guardrail is now padded. When guys slam their head, slam their opponent's heads on the guardrail and they act like it hurts. It's padded, bro. Go slam your head into a padded wall. See what happens. It that can't hurt as much as metal. It probably still hurts. Yeah, well, whatever. You know how they put a thin layer of padding on an MMA fighter's hands just to protect their hands? Maybe they're Thank just protecting Jordan. the guardrail. Oh, oh, look, we get an MMA reference from Jordan. No, they Shocker. just don't want the guardrails to get hurt. <laughs> so one thing I did notice, though, if you've ever watched a tables match, and, and then Extreme Rules, they went and basically did the same thing. The amount of wrestling that was actually in this match, like straight up wrestling, was incredible. Yeah, there was a lot. And were Eddie and Chris purposefully botching setting up tables to get over that they did? I don't think Chris That's could figure that, it that out. That would be pretty funny. No, Chris was having issues with it. Was it was hilarious, Jordan. Was, like, he couldn't figure it out. They could like, not figure out how to carry or set up tables. It was so... It added It added to the match, though. That's yeah. wonderful. It I enjoyed like, that very much. It was a really good match. Bubba Ray and Spike come out with the, with the win. This is a great match. I also gave it three match. I gave it a three two. I don't know what you gave it. I gave it a four. You gave it a four. I gave it's it a not. Four. A, it's not a four. It's the best tables match I've ever seen. Hold on. Oh, bite your tongue. How dare? You. Okay, straight straight tables. Straight tables. Someone didn't even jump over the top rope and miss it entirely, <laughs> which is the one of my favorite parts of AW this past week. <laughs> hey Matt, you know what? I will accept your four because you said it's your favorite tables match of all time. We'll it was good. I'm, su it I'm was sure good. it was. It's not like it was a shitty one. You're saying that for it was a yeah. great match. I just can't think of any. I other. watched it and I, I was like, this is a great match. Because I think you're going to be mad at me right away after this next match. Uh, so the cruiserweight title on the line, 
Jamin Noble and uh, Billy Kidman, both backstage agents now. Um, they go out of yes. the Cruiserweight title. They were, like, dreadfully underrated during this time. They give them seven and a half minutes, and they decided we are going to pack in as much shit into this match as we can in seven and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. I was. They didn't stop. Like, they, they worked. The So the first match had good pace. This one was like, okay, turn that pace up to, like, 11, and I like, feel follow like, us. I feel like every match that was coming out next would watch the one before it and be like, okay, hold my beer. And they go out there and they just... The pace in every match was through the roof, man. It was crazy. Jamie Noble's gimmick, his heel work in this, adds so much. Like his trailer trash gimmick, I love it. And what a and great Nidia. like he was. And he's Nidia. a fond memory of that area. Oh. Of that era, so Can I. we do this? Can we do this? Nidia, yay or nay? Ooh, hold on. Um, me too. No, but like just like at some. I, I, she oh, she like, has a really she, nice personality. Yeah. She's oh. really. She's, she's super, a beautiful lady. She is, she's but a it's beautiful like, lady. And you know, because if you look, if you see her during I'll the tough this, enough, Wikipedia show, did not do her justice. Like the picture is <laughs> like never again, did. it's like no. a, it was like the camera they used for Nidia was the one they used for Genie's cakes. It's very <laughs> similar camera. <laughs> but you know, what, I say that because when she was on Tough Enough, because she was on the first season of Tough that's, Enough, oh, that's she right. was she was very plain Jane, and she came out here and she she's gorgeous. Was she she's the great. one who was smiling in season one, and they got mad at her for smiling? That's yeah. all I remember about yeah. Tough Enough. Yeah, and they put a laxative yeah. in someone's food or a drink. That was, a, that was second season. I've said it on this show before. I'm a big Billy Kidman fan, and I don't know why. Man, just there was there was something missing all the time. But he could work in the ring, man. Oh man, he. I don't think he could have married to Tori Wilson for five years. Yes, yeah. he was. Good Props for to him. him on that one. So Meltz, Meltzer gives this. Uh, oh, Jamie Noble comes out with the win. He retains. Uh, Meltzer gives it a three out of five. I give it this a three point two five out of out of five. I give it a three point five. Why? Why the point two five? Because I felt it was better than the first match. Because I gave that one a three. Okay. Because I know we, I haven't heard a point two five or a point <laughs> seven five on these ratings yet, so I had to ask. And I I thought the first match was a little bit better because of the step and because yeah. they had a little bit more time, but I still found this to be. The, I'll go back to the pace. Oh my yeah. goodness. Was this incredible. And then they do a backstage segment. Brock Lesnar this time. I prefer Brock Lesnar back then to Brock Lesnar now. With the traps up to his and no And no yes. penis on his chest. Oh, it's a knife. Yeah, that's it's a knife. Face. No, no, no. Knife. Always, he face. feels like he's always Brock, got a knife Brock, you're cool, throat. man. I like you. Your sword tattoo is not stupid at all. <laughs> <laughs> we see him later but next match we get oh go ahead you oh. should you should watch him like wrestling too like his he was man. big amateur wrestling days that's like, what i was man, just gonna say oh, man so they're like sort of teasing like kurt angle and brock lesnar in like a shoot fight give me those two guys in their prime in a Oof. shoot fight all day brock would kill him just wait alone and oh, because yeah. he's got exactly that's it size but kurt but but kurt was a stunning wrestler in his day as well stud Teach him yeah. how to ground and pound? Oh, my God. Yeah. No, Kurt, um, a, few, a lot of these guys, like, thank God MMA was this late because a lot of these guys, well, they'll make more money in WWE, but if you're Kurt Angle, like, where do you think you're going to have the better career? You know, like, not wrestling, not at the beginning. He was just kind of a prodigy who went mm -hmm. into it. He would have been, if the UFC was what it was now, there's no way he was going to no, Oh, wrestling. no, yeah. He would be an oh. MMA fighter for no. sure. Yeah. So it's Somebody would have grabbed thing. him, taught him how to strike a and little if, bit. If Randy Couture could be a world champion in MMA, Kurt Angle could have been too. You hold your <laughs> tongue. Oh boy, here we go. Did you just bad mouth Randy bad Couture? No, no, the no, natural, no, no, no. the whoa, natural whoa, whoa. will not whoa. be talked. He's a two weight class champion. All right, hey, he's hey, a we're pioneer of the here. sport. Can I just say, Randy Couture, one of yeah. the greatest of all time. I'm saying if he could do it, he has the same background as Kurt Angle. Oh, Kurt Angle yeah, could have done had the same. Okay. And Kurt Angle okay. was that, probably a better yeah. wrestler. I'm sorry for getting fired up. About Damn, that. man. He doesn't even watch the paper, but he gets fired up. Uh, so next match is uh, we get the European title <laughs> defended by Jeff Hardy. The worst match on the card. Uh, no. William, heel William Regal was so yeah, much Yeah, it was against fun. William Regal. But it just – and you know what? That's hard That's hard for me to say because William Regal he is – so, he, He's so good, William Regal. He's a really good wrestler. He is. 
I love the brass knuckles gimmick. Fuck was, and that that was the best, uh, most devastating looking finisher. And uh, here comes the pain. Smackdown's here comes the pain video game. <laughs> that one looked awesome. But the thing with Regal is like it's the same thing. Like I, I said it with Eddie and Benoit. Immediately, if this is just a wrestling match, which it was, you can't give Regal lower than a two one five. I I can just because uh, their styles clash so bad. This is like early Jeff Hardy, like early singles run Jeff Hardy. So he wasn't really that adept at working like the actual yeah, wrestling so, yeah. style. He was more of a like put your foot to the floor and go, 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 go. And you could tell Regal was trying to slow him yeah. down. And it just wasn't happening. And I found it very clashy. Yeah. Like the styles clashed way too much. Yeah, for me. so Je- Jeff retains. There wasn't much to talk about. It was a short match. Um, I also gave it 1.5. I gave it a 2 on 5. I still enjoyed it. I still enjoy seeing William Regal in a wrestling match. So, I mean, I gave it a 1, but... I, I mean, can't hate like... you for the 1, Matt. Can't hate you. If that's your worst match on the card, it was definitely a pretty yeah. good card, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, well, speaking oh, yeah. of good match next, you get Vanilla John Cena, who's just matching up his gear to... Are we gonna talk... We're not going to talk about how young Ric Flair looks in 2002? Ric Flair never ages. Before the only that? time he ages is just recently when he went oh, to hospital. He ages. Oh, I was yeah. going to say, I'm like, before he that, he ages. Looked, never looked like a day over 55. Like, he looked good in 2002. Yeah. Well, was this prototype John Cena? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, it was yeah. the ruthless aggression John Cena. He's just matching his, his ring gear to match the city. So he's all in red today for the Red Wings, I guess. You know, you know what this era John Cena is? A plain chicken breast that's thrown on the barbecue, put in front of you. You're going to eat it. You know it's good for you. You don't I hate, hate it. this analogy. This is too long. Fuck. Oh. No. So he went over on Jericho. So huh? this is his first rest- This is With his first pay-per-view up. match. And I got a qu- I got two questions for you, Matt. Okay? One. Yeah. Of these two guys, who is more important to WWE history? Cena. Okay, Cena. okay Cena. that's fine. But the next question, who is more important to wrestling history? Jericho. Uh, he will be. It's a will tough be question, right? Done. That second one's a tough one. It'll I'm going to go Cena by a hair. No. no. Because Cena carried – he went 15 years carrying this company through some pretty – he transitioned this company from pay-per-view to the okay, network. But, okay, but, that's but, huge. Listen to this argument. If you were to take John Cena and put him into New Japan, is John Cena relevant? You can't do well, that, though. I mean. He would because, never go to you know New what Japan. It is? Because he's a, a product of WWE. He's part of that machine. Jericho is the chameleon of wrestling history. He can go anywhere. Yeah. Well, you guys are basically arguing, like, do you want a home run hitter? It's like you're arguing, like, Barry Bonds versus Ichiro. Like, Barry Bonds both, right? hit Jacks. But yeah, not I mean, with and not with Jericho's Ichiro. The guy could hit for power when he wanted. Like, Jericho's a five. Fuck, he's like a 10 tool wrestler. Like, I can't even. There's probably tools I can't even think of that he has done in his career. I honestly, like, in his prime, John Cena could have probably gone to AEW and been, done just fine. And that, well, yeah, because of what, like, the, the white rapper gimmick was money for that time frame you know what i mean like he yeah but he could have yeah. he could have morphed that now go to ew now with sort of that gimmick but morph it i think he does yeah. fine uh, just again the pace of this match was unreal oh, melser sure. gave melser yeah. uh, so cena wins with a roll up but melser gives us one and a quarter i don't know i how. gave it a three i thought it was fantastic okay i didn't go that high i I, gave it a two. I don't know what it was about this card, man. I was fired but up it was the whole a time. Good I match. loved every match. It was a really I good was, match. When did you watch it? Yesterday. Oh, okay. It was a little sloppy. Cena was very basic. But but Jericho knew how to use everything that Cena had. Or Jericho Jericho yelling at the ref, you shut yeah. your mouth. I, I rewound it and watched it three times. Just because he says it and he means it. I love Jericho. And you can tell so the ref's much. like Dude, I love him in anything. So, ne- and then anything we move on. We does. go to the next match. We get the Intercontinental Champion RVD Rob Van Dam. We have to do. Uh, we have if to get you, a video 
aspect going. If you didn't, you let me know when you want video. video. <laughs> if you didn't it's only a matter do of the time. thumbs to the shoulders, you're not a real wrestling fan, by the no, way. No, thumbs to the head. And dude. it was very thumbs to the head. And if you want to go listen to RVD's entrance music from Vengeance 2002, I love RVD's entrance music. One of a kind. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So like, you knew this match was going to end kind of weird because. Brock was already in line to main event SummerSlam. He won the King of the Ring, and you got yeah. a title match because of that. Go figure. Hey, win the King of the Ring and get something out of it, not just be Mr. Asthma and just, I won the King of the Ring, and then never <laughs> hear about it again. Was this the King of the Ring where Stone Cold went home? No. No, no. 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 Because it was him having to drop to Brock. Yeah, just on TV, and he wasn't into it. Right. But, uh, yeah, so – it was just kind of a whatever match. It was kind of just going through the motions, put RVD with Brock, and it's kind of just let them go a bit. Heyman's a big RVD guy, obviously. Heyman's a big Brock Lesnar guy. Is that why Is that why Brock sold yeah. for him? Oh, yeah. It's notorious. And RVD's moveset was one of the most, I think, one of the most interesting and in wrestling history. Like the Jordan. Rolling Thunder, the, the, the way – I love how he sold the frog splash every time – um what else what, okay so he had the um the back spinning chair kick face thing uh, the, the 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 van daminator the van daminator the coast to coast which he did in my opinion better than shane oh he does it way better than shane but he's... like he was the type of guy who again you turn on the wrestling video game and you would pick rvd because you're getting the like leg over heel kick to the face yeah You're, like rvd had in the video game had like eight moves that no one else in the game had that were fun to use every friggin time and then if you're in like the elimination chamber in the game or you're in like a tlc match you can do the frog splash he was in my opinion one of the top 10 characters in wrestling video game history i would agree and the other thing jordan go watch this match Oh, are you saying I'm gonna like it that yeah, much? Fun. RVD is notorious for being quite snug. Oh, he's a he stiff, throws, stiff worker. He right? throws a few potatoes at Brett Lesnar, and you're like, "Oh, I hope Lesnar." <laughs> you know what? Lesnar didn't because Heyman likes RVD. If Heyman likes a guy, yeah. Brock will bump for him. If you want an ex if you want an example, yeah, Daniel Bryan match a couple years ago, and then yeah. watch Finn and Ballard. then watch uh, the Dean Ambrose Brock Lesnar match at WrestleMania. It was because oh, Heyman did not no, like him. And Ambrose. Brock didn't like him either. And it was just, no, we'll just get through this match. That's it. So it ends in a DQ. Um, and then you see the most devastating strikes in all of history of wrestling from Charles Robinson on Paul Heyman. <laughs> Someone should have showed him how to punch, man. That was some bullshit going on there. Go back and watch that. It was so funny. It was good, uh, though. Meltzer gave this three and a quarter, which I thought was a little generous. But again, we're splitting hairs on this whole card. I gave it. I gave it two and a quarter just because it was like one tick down. Oh, I went higher than Melter. I really like this match. This match is over a four, in my opinion. This if title change. They have, you know, if they have five more minutes and a and a finish. Not necessarily a clean finish, but a finish. Like RVD hits Brock with a chair. How or something did Brock and get the disqualify finish. himself? Like, what did he? What did he hit him oh, with, or what did he, he do? Uh, Wasn't it Heyman? Heyman involved? I can't remember. Yeah. D DQ punching. Oh, uh, they punched. Uh, they hit Charles the ref up. or something. Oh, they hit the ref. Yeah. Okay, because that would explain why the ref went after him. Um, um, yeah, but give it, like, even if even if Lesnar wins by DQ because of a chair shot, because he just can't put RVD away, that would have been a better finish than the one yeah. we got. Um, next match after that, I think it's extremely underrated. I don't think Matt's going to give this a good mark, but. It's the big show against Booker T in a no holds barred match. match. Um, the pace again was super hot. for a big show yeah, match. Well, big show looked good, good in this match, he was in shape. You know who always looks good, and I'm a big fan of Booker friggin I, T. I wrote this down. You forget how good Booker T is sometimes. He was the yeah. champion during the um, the Alliance yeah. era. Like he was a lead player. He was the big. That, he was the big film. get. He was like the one that was like, "Okay, all these yeah. big guys aren't coming. I could be but the guy. I could be the guy." Yeah. He took he took a pay cut, so his contract yeah. got terminated. He took a bit of a pay cut, not much because he, he wanted to go right away. 
Hogan, but he wanted to go right away, and it was huge for him. And what a sick finisher. I love the scissor oh, kick. I think that his was His axe fucking... kick, and then the Harlem oh, yeah. hangover, his, yeah. his, his, mo- or his uh, flip there, yeah. with the leg drop. So and you know what? Good. Even... Sorry, the Houston it's, hangover. There's some people who are kind of like iffy about it. If you go back and watch his stint in TNA, even with the stupid accent, he's money in TNA too. He was great during that main event mm-hmm. mafia phase. How yeah. was he during the um, the King Booker phase? That was oh, the one it. that I didn't I really... Loved, you like it? I, I didn't really it was, watch that at all because I was kind of dumb, but I like it. But you know okay. what? He can just make anything work. That's why he's he's the charisma of him is just unreal. I and like he, he so, was so he watch. wins this one. Melzer gives this one and a quarter match. I want to curious what what did you give this match? Okay, so I gave it a two, okay. and here's my reasoning. <laughs> I feel like it was a little short. A seven minute no DQ match is kind of doomed from the start. They didn't use any weapons. Okay, they used the tables, they used the stairs, all that. Yeah, it's kinda... exactly, Jordan. They didn't use any weapons. Like they hindered, hindered by time for sure. But. I think they did a really good job with the time they were yeah. allotted. And it was good. They put Booker T over and it kept his ascent there. I gave it two and a half. I still thought it was pretty damn good. Oh, it wasn't yeah. bad. I didn't. I Again, didn't there is it. no bad match on this card. Oh, my God. Are you sure? Yes. The next one, not even, not even that bad. Because I love worst, three of the four actually, people okay. in this match. So I said. The worst match on the card was Hardy and mm-hmm. Regal. The worst thing on the card is next. You know, you know who though? Yeah, like uh, you know what you say? Thing. The worst thing on the card is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan and in... no, 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 no. We you're skipping the Triple H contract. Oh signing. yeah, I didn't really pay attention to that. I wasn't really into that. It was the Triple H decision. Yeah. I called. Is it. this where he's choosing to go to one of yeah. the brands or something? Yeah. And it's just he's divorcing Stephanie in storyline, and Bischoff and Stephanie, their their chemistry is about as electric as I'm looking for an analogy. And I can't the, find the ground. <laughs> the ground. No, is the ground electric? Because that's the ground's like the electricity. Oh, this damn week it. on yeah. learning things with bros, bumps, and beers. Nah, whatever. No, no, hold on. We're we're sidetracking here. Michaels what comes isn't out. electric? Um, Oh, a, a, a batteryless taser. There it is. Yeah, I like there it. you wow, go. Good Thank for you. you. Got it, guys. Nailed they it. have about as much electricity as a batteryless t- there you taser. Go. Thank you. Good job, Matt. Good job. But it's like you were this, trying to say in went, American City there. <laughs> this went like. <laughs> <laughs> this went like, what, Pat? 10, 15 minutes the almost? This yeah, match was 10 no, minutes no, on no. the dot. No, we're 10 still on the last one. Oh, sorry. You could have given three to five minutes to three other matches and not done this and done it on like Monday yeah. Night Raw. But I get they didn't want to do it on Raw or SmackDown or whatever. Um, Go to the next match because I know, Before we match. get to the next match, I say Hulk Hogan was the worst thing on this card. Hulk Hogan in 2002 is still doing the same crap he was doing in the late 80s, early 90s. And the crowd is still And they are, but it's like, I'm listening to it and I'm like, I've heard this promo a billion oh, times. This promo was a bad. Billion, a promo billion promos bad. like this. And the more I watch Hogan as an adult, it just there was no evolution of Hogan ever. It was the same shit over and over again, and that's why even with all the crap he's doing, like he's not a good person in general. Uh, he he comes back, and I'm like, th- you're just redoing what you did 25 years ago. But in 2002, if you're gonna get, if he's the Undertaker home- of 2002. Yeah. Yes. It kind of is. I mean, the Undertaker, I think, should have a better long-term legacy. He's, a, he's, he's more, he he's more of a racist on us. Yeah. And, uh, but if you're going to get a good match or a good presentation out of a 2002 Hulk Hogan, put him in a match with Edge, Christian, and yeah. Lance Storm. You want to talk about a guy who I would love, actually one of the first people I'd love to get on this podcast. I've been a big fan of Lance Storm for okay, a really so long time. Me and Matt time. talked about it. I'm a huge it, Lance Storm. I really like Lance about Storm. It. Lance Storm. So the match is the Un-Americans, which is Christian and Lance Storm, against the tag champs, and Tess, and Tess shows up later, uh, against the tag team champs, Edge and Hogan. Okay? Lance Storm, I tell Matt, Lance Storm, the only issue with him is he was born at the wrong time. He would have been NWA world champion during the territory days. Mm-hmm. No, he would have been AWA world champion. That's whatever. In the yeah. 80s, 
in the eighties in Minneapolis, he was an AWA world like, champion. Even on Twitter no. a couple years ago, he had this thing called "Bring the Back the Backdrop," and I was like, "You're right, I missed the backdrop. I yeah. loved it. Oh, good open, Ooh, quality nice. open. I missed the backdrop so much because I thought it was just such a like fun move, and apparently it was a bitch to execute for a lot of people. But no, I Lance Storm, his whole like serious wrestling gimmick, mm. like I found all of it really entertaining. This. The Un-Americans was probably his best mic work of his career, yeah. though. Yeah. Well, because they put him back out... with guys he knew, yeah. right? Like, with he his came buddies. out yeah. with Edge and Christian and Jericho, and like, yeah. So, you get your moves of Doom from Hogan. Yeah, you get to spots. It's... It was just showcase for him, and that yeah, it wasn't the great. Three times. Um, Test interferes. Test, you know who Test is, Matt? Test is... From Toronto, Ontario, R.I.P. Test. Test is Drew McIntyre without charisma or talent. I, I wrote and down, with an eye, an eye thingy. Yeah. I wrote down why Eyebrow wasn't Test a bigger deal, and you yeah. nailed no it. No charisma, and he's not good in the ring. He was more like a quiz. Oh, God. Yes, he was. Yeah. He, he looked great, though. He, he looked did. great. He wasn't an exam. Yeah. They yeah. tried and didn't yeah. work out. So this one has a scree finish. The Un-Americans actually win the tag team titles. Jericho yes. Yeah, Jericho's out. involved. Um. He's so Melzer gives us two out of five. I gave it two and a half. I thought it was pretty fun. I don't know. What a war horse stable that yeah. could have been. Edge, <laughs> Jericho, Storm, Christian. Well, Tess. no, it wouldn't have been Edge because Edge was with Hogan. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, can you imagine? Oh, yeah. He took all the big name Canadians. Yeah, Matt, tell us your them. rating so we get to the main event before we run out of time. Two and a half. Okay. Oh yeah, perfect. Sorry. So main event time, baby. <laughs> the champion, oh. Undertaker, against The Rock and Kurt Angle. American match. badass. The talent in this match. Unbelievable. My one question for you, Matt, before we get to the match. Do you think The yep. Rock has a little extra help with his physique now? Like Ica Pro? Do you think he's taking some uh, Ica Pro? No. I don't think so. No, you don't so. think so? Okay. He was that big. He was that big when he was a teenager. He he's That's natural. He was 50 this years is, old. This is uh, What you saw in this pay-per-view is Hollywood Rock. When he broke yeah. into Hollywood, they told him he yeah, was too slipper. big. He lost a bunch of weight, and then he was like, "The hell with you guys! I'm gonna be the new Arnold Schwarzenegger." Okay, mm-hmm. and now he next, makes fifty million dollars. Next question a year. about these three talents: Undertaker, Rock, Angle. Are these guys top ten WWE history of all time? Yes. No. Who's not in the top ten? Well, are you saying like all time if we're talking historical importance? Because yes. like, you you'd have to say Hogan. You'd probably have to put Macho Man in there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I think the one. I think and the then, odd man. Up. I feel like you go Stone Angle's Cold. Angle's the only man. Out. Triple yeah, H Angle, and you like chip. Angle's through. the odd man. Angle off. might be the one who's like twelfth. Yeah, he 11th. just just misses it. And if Angle had stayed there and had the feuds that he ended up having in TNA with like Samoa Joe, he would oh. be. And you know what? Down. I knew the outcome of this match. I knew it was going to be the Rock going against Brock at SummerSlam. And I. St- yeah, I, I was jumping out. I jumped two or three times while watching the match. And Matt, what's the best part of this match that Pat would love the most? I, I'm, I'm a chair sure. shot to the head. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, let's go. Was. You know what I'm impressed yeah. with? This card was tight. Like when you look at the times, like they fit a mm. lot of quality into. Yes, they did. Like only three matches exceeded ten. One of them was ten on the dots. So you can't even count. It that. had it had pace. It had storytelling. It had false finishes. And a bit of everything. Like, I, I just I found myself watching this seven hour. hour pay-per-view. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. Like I like like Matt said, I watched every second of this match. I didn't look at my phone. I didn't get distracted. I was This this, this was triple threat one oh one too. You incapacitate one guy with like a, a pretty devastating yeah. move. The other two wrestle. And then the other guy comes in, you incapa- it, it was just what? a really flow a good really triple well. threat. Oh but, go ahead. Yeah, go, no, a no, good no, triple go. threat has three mini matches in it, and then the ending yes. is a little convoluted, but everybody's in there. Yeah. I think the only miss, there's two misses in this match that do, that don't make it a five. So we talked about uh, how Cena and Punk controlled the crowd. How Cena and Punk controlled the crowd, and they didn't control the crowd as good as they did. And then the other one was, um, I think, protecting Taker. Mm-hmm. By pinning Angle, I thought that was the wrong call. Really? I think the I think the Rock should have pinned Taker. Yeah, but yeah. then you get your return match on Raw. You get Undertaker. But Rock. you didn't. 
Did they? Did I don't they know. Do have to, Jordan would have to check for us, but I'm not sure. I can check. I don't even know if they would have needed yeah. it. Like, I don't think you even. Need that's that why I, I I just felt like pin taker. So Matt, you say this is pretty close to a five. What did you end up giving him? Meltzer gave it four and a half. I gave it. A four I give it half. a four and three quarters. I thought it was that close to a five. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I you knew I can't argue that. Uh, I gave it a four and a half, just because I did notice two yeah. little things I didn't like, so I I just took off. Yeah, but either way, it's a high four. This is a bitchin' card, man. Good for you, Matt. Or if you don't, if you don't cheers this card, yeah, you should not. So watch we that. we are cheers that. in this card, hundred percent, Matt. Also, just so you guys know, no follow oh. up. The Rock beat Eddie Guerrero the next okay. night, but RBDV Jeff Hardy said, "Unified." Yeah, they got. Connell, yeah, they got rid of European because European was trash. So yeah. um, yeah. This is the, that was the last time yeah. the European. Look at that. History. This card was historic. So Matt, well. uh, we both cheers it. That's a pretty simple call. Um, next week, what are we doing, Matt? We're we're going in a completely different direction. What are we doing? We are going to SummerSlam 1989. Before I was born. So for those of you who know your wrestling history, 88 was the first one. 89 is the second one, and we get to see yeah. Zeus in a wrestling match. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be a hell of a time. I love you shit all over Taker, and now we get to see Zeus and Taker, which is amazing. Can't wait. <laughs> or not Taker, Hulk Hogan. Okay, so what? That's great episode. I love this card. So again, you could follow us on Untapped. I am at Pat Ghani. Jordan is at Jsco55. Matt is at Ghani. And Matt with Tuesdays. You could follow us on uh, Twitter at Bros Bumps Beers. You can follow us at in, on the Instagram at Bros Bumps and A-N-D Beers. And we will be back next week. You remember to drink local. We'll be back with SummerSlam 1989.